Hi friends, welcome back. So uh, I had to make some little changes before I continue with this uh, with this tutorial. So first and foremost, I have ensured that I have brought in all the the files uh, for the CSS JavaScript into this application. As you can see, uh, in my HTML theme, I have brought all the files so that when we start running the application, it will be just be we will just go into the course of what we should be doing on this application so ensure your ensure your server is running XAMPP and XAMPP and uh, Apache and uh, and MySQL are running so what you're just going to do here is we are going to type uh, PHP art artisan serve artisan serve uh, that is PHP artisan serve and NPN run dev. Uh, the goodness of uh, Laravel, that is La Visual Studio Code, you can split screen in uh, NPM run dev. Okay, so basically it's going to chunk the JavaScript and also it's going to chunk uh, the PHP files. So we can fire up our server running and then we can start from a good reference point so let it open up the browser and we see we are going to see our application running so without further ado we want to emphasize working on working on uh, on, on on the on the custom theme so if you are also looking to download this team guys i'm going to set a link in the link uh, below so let's just uh, uh, log in and then we get started with what we were uh, up to so let's uh, fire up the login the javascript has not yet started uh, firing up but it's okay so let's just reload the page again uh, after reloading the page you will see that uh, the app will be up and running okay so with that uh, you will see the javascript the the files are loaded correctly but there is also another way you can remove that so if you, if your your code is not running correctly uh, you see here on the you see on the uh, on the app app folder uh, this file this file that is being generated for G J javascript and css this one so this one the, the link asset this file uh, this one for build this link you should also add it on on your on your guest guest uh, guest uh, on your guest uh, on your guest link okay here so you can also add that one so that when the application fires up it will pick up that file immediately when you start loading your application it is going to be to be loaded immediately so without uh, breakages as you can see it has already been loaded correct correctly so what you're going to do is we are going to log in uh, we are going to use our users Pazax and then we are going to go into the page as as you can remember we had used Rukuda Rukada 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 Co Covent so we were emulating their theme and uh, shout out to these guys this is the Rukada theme and I have just also brought all the files that were supposed to be uh, just the CSS so that we have a, a better look of the logins uh, the login the dashboard so uh, the, the dashboard okay so that is how it will look, really appear let me just reload um, because it's the, uh, the like the first time you are loading it it has to chunk all of it as you can see they are trying to reload uh, and then chunking it so that it can be visible uh, fast uh, to be up so basically you are telling us uh, uh, the password is not on the record uh, let's just we can register another person let's just register another person so what you're going to do is register another user uh, register another user let's just uh, let's call him Zach uh, uh, let's give him at info info at yeah info at uh, yahoo.com okay dot com and then password 
password and then password so with that let's just register that user and then you are going to log into the dashboard just right away as you can see now the Rukuda and the theme right now look so much closer so we want to do some coding that is we want to get into the right things of this application okay so i had told you we are going to use uh, lara trust lara trust lara trust and we are going to set up roles and permission so we are going to make changes on the login login form uh, and then login registration form so that uh, that uh, when somebody used to logs into the application when somebody logs into this application here and then we're also going to do some changes on on the dashboard okay the dashboard controller so that we give the if person has this kind of roles he's going to look at these kind of pages so uh, when you get started you are going to remove all these all these pages are not supposed to be there so that you can just remain with the the remaining tools that you want so on the header on the header you can decide now to remove that is that was on the header and also on the sidebar so you can now just uh, if uh, we we get started with the ht on the on the on the here where we have the dashboard you can now just uh, replace the dashboard with the link to to dashboard so how to access link for laravel we normally use uh, that uh, root root uh, root like that and then you can select root dashboard so that when the user goes to root that the to goes and clicks on dashboard he will be sent to dashboard control save that is we have made some changes on the on the dashboard when somebody clicks on dashboard he is going to go back to the dashboard so through that process you can see that uh, you as a developer you can pick somebody's information and tweak it for your own personal reasons okay so i don't categorize that as coping but just understanding somebody's work and bringing somebody's work into your own personal work and basically you are you are improving basically let me say i'm improving the code of love because you may imagine the code for all, for 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 this one <coughs> laravel it was bare bones now we are we are using rukuda's responsive bootstrap theme to make sure that we are having an amazing web web application so with that uh let's continue so we are going to add some roles and permissions so we, if you want to get to understand this you're just going to get started here and then you're going to get to installation process uh, composer require uh, lara trust uh, composer require signaco lara trust so with that you're going to open up a new terminal let's just first set up the uh, we are going to set up the uh, those uh, th those functions so that is first and then we are going to publish th that config file okay so with that i'm just going to copy paste so that we can go as fast as possible so with that uh, we are going to install lara trust and then the next part is we are going to configure those uh, lara trust and then you are going also to to define the roles and permissions okay so let's we have already installed lara trust uh basically we install lara trust and then the next part here is now we are going now to start configuring it so you do that uh, php artisan vendor config so that is uh, that is a config file for lara trust that you are going to set it up uh the next part is you are going now to do uh, lara trust setup okay a php lara trust setup control c but for better understanding you can uh, go through the the, the 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 documentation on your own so and uh, if you want to add more features and functionalities also you can do that so proceed yes and then it's going to add the roles and permissions uh with that uh the next step is uh, uh you are going to use uh, so basically uh on on uh, setup uh adding lara trust user interface so basically 
use Slara Trust permission. So with that, I can add this one on uh, on 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 the user. Okay, on the user. Control P. I'm going to Control P is to search something as quickly as possible on your on your on your model. So with that, just do that. I'm going to use Slara Trust. Use Slara Trust. Uh, at times I have installed. Uh, it's going to add Lara Trust permissions so like that. So the next part is uh, I'm not going to do do Composer Auto Dump or anything. We are going to go on the the next part. Uh, go here on the basic uh, migration. Uh, but before that, let's just go and usage. Okay. So what we are going to do, we are going to do the the cedar first. Okay, cedar. Uh, so PHP artisan cedar. Okay, what am I talking about? CIDA is uh, this is a file where you can configure your roles and permissions. So, Lara Trust CIDA, there is a CIDA uh, uh, PHP Artisan Vendor CIDA Control C. Just follow up with me slowly, and then I will explain later on uh, in the next few minutes. Uh, so. But on this uh, Lara Trust CIDA, what you're going to do, you're just going to open it up. We're going to open it up. So here at this point, you want to define your application. So let's say the first person is going to be the super administrator or uh, a super admin. Super admin. Something like that. And then the second one should be either administrator or uh, viewers you can call it the, the the roles that you want to define okay so and then the last person either they are the users okay so the admins and then maybe admins you can say admins admin admin and then user so basically there is an admin and a user so basically depending on the 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 the, the, the for formation of your organization the way you want your applications to look like you can define that and any other role that you want to to define okay with that and then the last part is you are going to call that cedar into your uh, database database cedar so basically let's just control p database cedar database cedar you're going to add you're going to call that function so for that we are going just to i'm not going to create a user function there uh, so i'm going to cancel that cancel that cancel that cancel that and then i'm just going now to add the the cedar so this is going to call that function when you do migrations after you have done migrations now you are adding that the piece of information from the cedar lara trust cedar you're going to be adding it in, into the database okay with that that is okay and then lastly but not least I know that is what should be should look like so after that uh, what I can do now is now I can do now I can now run the migration okay so this is just the first part of configuring your your laravel application so uh, bear with me if you are you're lost anywhere anywhere along the line please go back just uh, rewind and then follow up with me so with that we are going to do the next part we are going to do the migration okay so we can still come back here and then we can now do the migration okay so after installation we can do the migration okay or if you also want to use the the, 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 the basic features that lara trust has php artisan migrate you can use the same the, all those features if you want to follow the the default look and feel of lara trust you can also use that so i can do the migration so basically i have it will going to create the table for migration and then the Lara Trust setup. And then when you do that, you need to add what we call um, the Lara the database. Seed. Now you need to seed that those functions. Okay, so you need to add those functions into the database. So PHP artisan seed. Okay, so database seed. Uh, the goodness so basically php db uh, seed class database seeder so you are seeding this uh, you are now you are adding this information into the database that is the reason why it is called like that so it is going to be a very long video but uh, bear with us just follow don't get 
lost. So just to confirm that kind of information has been added into the database, you are going to go to your database, uh, localhost, uh, localhost, localhost, uh, on your localhost, and then on the database, it was called, uh, the, this application was called uh, modern app okay so here we are going to just to go into the, the database of modern app and take a look at what has been done okay uh, so given that that just give it a second uh, i'm also pushing it to the limit or you can fire up, fire up from that location so uh, it is called modern app uh, we have done the migration for the users uh, and also I have done the migration for 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 Lara Trust. As you can see, we have uh, roles and permissions. So those are the, the Lara Trust uh, CEDA has the roles and permissions. So these are the roles and the permissions that uh, we have fired up. As you can see, let's just go to roles, 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 roles roles you can see we have now the roles that we have defined here uh super admin admin and user so that when a user sign up into the application he is going to add that he's going to be given that role as an admin or as a user so at that point we need to make some changes on 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 the login form okay so let's go back and we are going to we are going to go into the login we are going to go to the login page control p uh, i just want to register user register user this is the register user controller this is the process where how users are being registered this is the process how users are have get registered into the application this is the process of creating a user the user uh, they input their username their email and the password but now what we need to add onto this function we need to add the role so we are going just to add a, another line of function where we are going to call, call uh, role user user uh, add add role okay so you're going to add role uh, the request of the role so basically it is going to be uh, a request uh, request uh, and the role id uh, i uh, role role uh, role id where does this role id come from so basically these are the roles from the database okay these are the user roles that have been generated from the database the rows that we have assigned from the tables these tables so basically when you register and then you are assigning that if you are you are going to register as a user you're going to be assigned as role user or if you're going to register you're going to be assigned as role admin or super admin this process is going to be so simple so the only thing that we are going to add on uh, on our home page that is on our on our on our on our on our on our registration page the auth page uh, on our register page this page we are going to add a, a div for basically a role so basically we are going to just add a drop down of roles and permissions so just a div for roles and permission so with that uh, just after uh, after the second password confirmation we are just going now to add uh, that roles and permissions there so basically it's going to be an admin uh, admin and then uh, let's say we are going to have we had super admin super admin and then admin admin and then and then you are going to have user 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 depending on the roles and functions that you want to give so this one you can keep it as super 
super admin and then maybe this one you're going to give it an, an, an admin and then this one you're going to give him as a uh, normal user uh, user so this is how you are going to define your roles and permissions during registration and then i'm just going to save that and then you are going to reload our page uh, come back here uh, we can log out uh, the process is simple just we can log out or open in another browser uh, localhost and then just check those functions have been deployed onto the register page okay so this is what we have done for the past 10 minutes so so we have given a role so basically when this user is going to register is going to register as a super admin uh an admin or a user so basically that is the process so with that you can see that uh at this point uh these functions these other functions we are going to remove them uh these are just placeholders of what the functions we want to have our applications to look like but uh, kudos to you if you have uh, been with me and to this minute as we have been creating this application you can see that we have created uh, and we have now added the dashboard the, the dashboard basically a very nice dashboard uh, we have uh, de defined uh, our roles and permissions basically when the user is going to log into the application is going to look to see these roles and permissions that we have created for this application so guys meet me on the second bit whereby i just want also to to chunk out this information so that you can also have the ability to create your own application so guys it is a process no one is forcing you to master all these things and it is at times it's not a roller coaster this is the process that developers go through when they tell you they have the best time of their life with that guys subscribe to this amazing channel and let's meet on the next bit when we we also um, expand on this e expansive knowledge zach animate studios creativity one step at a time cheers before even i go further uh before even i go further i want just to make some correction that i had realized while i was editing so at this point uh this is not the, the when you when, when a user will be registering on the application this function was to come above before register event so i had just to cut that information from that point and then put it up there so that when the process of registering a user the process will be the 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 information will be validated and then the user will be added it will be created into the database in the user and then it will plug the role from the database with the role id where does the role id come from now these are the role these are the role ids that we had defined uh, these are the roles the role id super admin admin and user okay those are the roles from the database that will be called uh, uh, when the user is loading so when during the process of registering a user right now when i register a user i'm going to give him a specific role so basically if it's a super admin is going to have a specific role whereby i'm going to define all the roles and permissions that i want the super admin to to have that is when the ad super admin is going to look to to audit the entire website he's going to see all the users or, or he's going to to give roles and permissions to all his users and a user is going to have a role like reading a uh, post or submitting information into the system and you can still continue defining those roles as you see fit on your application so with that uh, that was something i had realized when i had left the the, the first part of the video i had not uh, done it correctly so i have just uh, uh, rectified uh, 
the rolls this this is now this is now the flow because the, the code will uh, start from uh, requesting the validation if you have done a wrong validation it's going to to point it out if you have uh, and then that information if all this information has been correctly added and then that information will be passed into the database and then assigned to that role uh, to that new user and then somebody is going to be redirected to the root of dashboard so Another thing that is going to happen is we are going to define our roles and permission onto a dashboard controller. Okay, initially we had just specified the function index here, but we had not done uh, uh, proper ver uh, verification of functions. So at this point, we are going to define uh, in the next video, we are just going to define giving roles uh, into. Uh, into the user different type of users so we are going to define that if a user has a specific role he's going to go into this page if a user is a dashboard and this way is a very clean way of uh, of defining the roles and permission so I'm going just going to show you uh, a sample code uh, so it's going to just look like this so uh, basically it's going to look like this public function index uh, okay sorry just for a minute uh, public function index and then it's going to look like that so basically like that if a user has a role of an admin uh, so basically if a user has a role of an admin he's going to go to a dashboard if a user has a role of a maybe user user is going to go into a user user page so basically this is how you define user 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 page so this is how you define the roles uh, the roles for and the types of pages your users are going to look uh, or the types of views your users are going to to, to interact uh, with your application and this is more cleaner way compared to the other way that i have i have also interacted with uh, i have also interacted with uh, for, for for crying out loud i've also interacted with uh, uh, we call uh, Sparty. Okay, uh, it's called Sparty Media Library. Okay, the the Sparty roles and permissions. Okay, uh, it was hard for me to configure that because uh, basically it normally hits the 404. But uh, with that, please bear with me. But we are going to continue building this kind of application so that you can still continue understanding so we have a long way to go uh, we are looking forward to have roles and permissions and then we are going to create now those pages uh, the, the either the post pages or to do application basically onto this application as a user we are going just to have here a to do to do controller whereby a user is going to, to the, when a use, user is going to read the to do the admin is going to create the to do and then the user is going to read the to do and either if we can add a comment onto it so it's going to be fun please uh be with us uh follow us zach anime studios creativities one step at a time. Let's meet on the next video.